Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an uh, honor for me to be uh, in such a well-organized place. Uh, I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about the times we are living in, which in my opinion are very interesting times. Well, we are living in a constant change, uh, as it was described by philosopher and uh, sociologist uh, Professor Zygmunt Bauman, we are living in the era of m uh, fluent modernity, which means that all the time things are changing around us and we are less and less tied to the ground, to the place, as the utopias uh, described by Thomas More was connected with topos, with the place, these days the topos doesn't exist anymore in a physical meaning. Actually, we are more connected to the international organizations or companies than to our homeland. Next to it, we can consider our chapters of life. And then uh, we might say that every 20 years, our special needs changes. First we grow up, then we start our family, then our kids are leaving home. So each time, those needs are changing. Uh, those thoughts uh, are quite well depicted by the statistics provided by Eurostat, which shows that in 2010 there were 5.1 million people who migrate into one or from one of the EU countries. In 2013 there were already 6.2 million. In 2016 this number reached 7.3 million. That means that the society are more and more in motion. We are becoming a neo-nomads, which means that physically, by changing the place, mentally, by adapting to new places, but also digitally, by living in our digital world as uh, social media, uh, we are literally a nomads. Next to that, there is a huge need uh, for those people who lost their houses. There are 65.6 .6 million people who were forced to leave their places, their houses. There are almost 2 million people in OECD, so develop, developed countries, who are homeless. And mass amount, 1.6 billion people who live in, non, uh, uh, in uh, housing without uh, adequate standards, so substandards. To answer for those issues or problems, we might think about new structural systems and the new materials which can be cheap, easy to get, but which can be also recycled, reused or reset after they are used. One of such a material is paper. But actually, what is paper, uh, you might ask? If we look closer at it, we can compare it to the portion of spaghetti uh, referring to my previous uh, speaker, which is put on the plate and let dry. So the connection between the fiber, they create the hydrogen bonds, which means that the material gets their st its strength. First, producers of paper were hornets and bees. They produced their uh, shelters, their nests. This is actually the uh, picture which is covered on my PhD book about paper in architecture, because I think it shows everything. A structure, paper, which is built on the edge of cardboard box. But actually, a uh, human uh, who invented paper was Tsai Lung in 105, and he showed it to the emperor of China, and then the idea of paper production was spread around the world. Uh, so some places, like Japan, they still produce paper in very traditional way, uh, with the uh, hand sieve, but there are also huge factories, they produce like 40,000 tons of cardboard or paper a day. But paper is still the same. Natural material, natural fiber, fi fibrous material that is created by the many cellulose fibers. However, when we think about paper in architecture, obviously first thought goes to forest and we think about Japan and Japanese architecture. So beautiful fusuma panels which are painted or shoji panels, uh, which are those which let the light go through. And when we think about contemporary architecture out of paper, we rather have quite wrong connotation with it. But in fact, paper can fall in five categories. It can be a design, an interior design, uh, temporary event venues, as a, such as uh, exhibitions, 
a housing, even public buildings, and of course, emergency houses. There are four main products which are uh, mass-produced by paper industry, which can be used and implemented in architecture. These are honeycomb panels, paper tubes, corrugated cardboard and L-shapes and the U-shapes. Those elements uh, are used in different configurations and I would like to show you several examples how we applied, how we used those mass-produced elements, so cheap and pro-ecological elements, uh, in different scopes, in different scales. Talking about furniture, um, we created several, as attempts, several uh, chairs and the tables which, are, which were exposed in the Museum of Modern Art in Wroclaw. So we had there some sofas, some rocking chair, armchair, table chair, uh, even a little lamp which we called MCT, Modern Christmas Tree. The idea was that instead of cutting the tree from the woods, you can buy such a lamp and you can place it uh, in your house during the Christmas and then easily recycle it afterwards. Uh, you can also uh, create uh, smaller things. We also tried a little bit bigger structures, such as um, um, reception desk or even the interior part of the Museum of Modern Art in Wroclaw. Or the last part you see on the uh, right is like a work and roll mechanism. We did it with our students at the university in Wrocław that by changing the position, you can use it in different ways. Then we have the exhibition pavilions, small pavilion called Paper Cave, which from the outside is kind of a box, but if you go inside, you have this feeling that you really get into the cave where five products of uh, uh, innovative uh, in paper industry were um, exhibit. And then going to the outside, going, uh, going to the exterior, we created a paper pavilion for the 70th anniversary of Wrocław University of Science and Technology, which was composed, it was a mixed structure of wood and paper tubes. When the paper tubes arrived, some of our students immediately fall in love with the material with the help of our, uh, of our uh, sponsor, we created, we did the test, the, the structural test, and then uh, six components with an arches with, uh, and the tubes connected with them were prefabricated and then they were transferred to the city center of beautiful city of Wrocław. Then the pavilion was exposed there uh, and inside of the pavilion we showed the 70th uh, 70 uh, year history of uh, Wrocław University. On the lower level, there were special plates for the kids. On the upper level, a little bit more serious information for the adults, let's say, if there is anything like adult, actually. But the pavilion has the most appealing, uh, was the, mo the, the most beautiful during the night when all of 400 96 paper tubes were enlightened with the LED light. Each could change differently in time. So it was really like a meeting spot in the meeting city. Uh, the, the, the most um, lovely view was when we see the couples coming there, kissing, hugging, which meant that the thing worked. Later on, uh, we uh, did uh, over a dozen prototypes at the University of Technology in Delft uh, within the Bacillab course, checking different types of materials, different structural systems, different connections. And finally, the, the, the last project, uh, which got the first prize within the European Capital of Culture, was a House of Cards. House of Cards is a unit, a housing unit, uh, which was primarily uh, designed for the refugees coming to Europe. There was like a huge influence in 2015-16. And then we decided to propose a uh, different arrangement. There were two main units. By arranging them differently, we could achieve, for example, a courtyard house for three families or the row houses for eight people or 12 people. Also with the bigger uh, scale, that could be development for 50 people or even for 500 people, more rigid, uh, in a kind of a Rome camp structure. 
Everything was prefabricated, so the idea was that we sand the wooden floor and the cardboard elements, cardboard frame structure and wall and roof panels to the place, and they are quite easily combined together. And then we start to produce uh, the first prototype, which was the smallest unit. Uh, the, the frame structure was connected with the wooden elements, and that was actually all the wood we used. Uh, which was, I would say, less than 20% of the whole structure. And then the House of Cards was exposed uh, again in the main square, and people, when they first thought about paper house, mm, of course they didn't believe, but when they came in, when they knocked the, 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 to the walls, they tried, they touched it, they started to gain some trust into the material. So, Summarizing, if you think about paper in architecture, or paper as a main building uh, material for design and architecture, uh, it has both pros and cons, obviously. It's cheap and easy uh, to get material. It's recyclable and uh, recycled. It has very good thermal properties. Uh, however, it exists uh, in a, I mean, it can be used in a short uh, spans because of the uh, properties of the material. Uh, it's uh, f uh, the, the water and moist cause dangers because it can uh, suck the water from the from the outer. So this is the biggest threat for the material. And it doesn't it doesn't exist in the building codes? Maybe in Japan, in England, and the Netherlands are only countries where the permanent paper buildings were built. But in my opinion, the biggest threat is the, the limited trust of the users. So if you know perhaps the story tale about three little pigs, if there will be a fourth one, her house would be made out of paper, I guess. <laughs> so I would like to uh, convince you to, to open your eyes and try things which at the beginning are not uh, seems to be realistic, like using paper in architecture, huh? two opposite stuff. But yeah, it's possible and actually it's real. Thank you very much.